Hey, God bless you, my friend. This is Sister Sharon, and today I want to give you five characteristics of a potentially dangerous person. I was just made aware recently of a man who shot to kill his wife. He was an elder at a church. When the police got after him, he eventually shot and killed himself. He committed suicide. Now, beloved, I want you to know, uh, it was said that this couple were separated. They were estranged. But I can assure you, this man had already revealed and manifest very dangerous characteristics. And this could very well be the reason she and he were separated. But if you and I are not serious, beloved, you got to be serious about your life in Christ. You have to be ruthless. People can talk about you, say whatever they want about you. Beloved, Jesus already prophesied to us what it's going to be like in the end. He said it's going to be as it was in the days of Noah. Then Paul wrote and gave us a sobering portrait of the latter days. People would become lovers of themselves. Their hearts would wax cold. We are living in some times, beloved, you got to be serious about Jesus because he is a good shepherd and if we listen closely he will give us who to guard ourselves from not that all people are evil and bad but because beloved when you pick up this plow if you are a person that is in ministry do you not know this is not a game do you not know, beloved, that we don't have time to to uh, patty cake and, and, and stroke and stoke one another's egos? We don't have time to play games. You cannot let anybody in your life. You have to understand the role that they play in your life. Jesus had an inner circle of three. He, d he had 12 disciples, but he did not have each one of them close as others were to him. Peter, James, and John. This was like a core group that Jesus spoke to. And the scriptures tell us this. They were on the Mount of Transfiguration. He don't take everybody up on the Mount. And you and I shouldn't either. You cannot let anybody in your life. And if you decide to ignore the, the warning signs of character flaws that cannot be friends, you cannot overlook them. They cannot be just, oh, well, no. You got to be ruthless, friends, because once you let somebody in your habitation, your heart, do you not know how hard it could be to get them out? And they end up in your heart trying to destroy your life. And for some, they literally will remove you from the earth by trying to take your life, just like this man did. Forget all this church stuff. I'm telling you, friends, people could talk about, and when I say church, I'm talking about the false church. You have people, who, just like this man, claiming that he was in Christ Jesus, and he mur tried, he attempted to murder his wife. Let me tell you, beloved, hear me very closely. I pondered this before the Lord. The characteristics of a potential person that will kill you, friends. Because when we do not do the teachings of Christ and put into practice what he taught that is clear in the four Gospels, you can become a murderer. Because it's in every man, given the right circumstance, if the spirit of the living God is not in you, you have the potential to do anything. That's right. They have the potential to do anything. These are not in any particular order, but I'm going to give you five characteristics. You cannot ignore them. It can save your life. Do not take lightly the instructions of God, the wisdom of God. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 24 tells us, do not make friends with an angry man. And an angry man, beloved, is not always someone that's going around raging. But you can discern by what comes out of his mouth what's going on in his or her heart. 
not in any particular order, but my friend, if you are dealing with someone who holds grudges, this is the mindset. This is the type of disposition that has the potential to kill another human being because grudges are in violation of the teachings of Jesus that we must forgive and when we are offended we are to go to our neighbor we are not to manufacture dreams in our head y'all know what I'm talking about you dreaming how you should have said what you should have said and you should have did what you should have did and you continue with this um, movie playing out in your head Oh, beloved, and before you know it, you are mistreating this person. So when you and that person have a fallout, how does he or she treat you after the fallout? Because, beloved, holding grudges, it brings us to number two, revenge. When a person is doing things to harm you or withhold love from you after you have had a, a fallout with them, that's a dangerous person. If that person continues to withhold love, they used to, to, to be jovial and kind towards you, and now they ain't got much for you, you need to think about giving that person an exit from your heart and disposition. You can still be cordial, but get them up out of your psyche because that person can potentially turn into a murderer. Revenge is acting out those grudges, which is usually, I call them movies in the heart. They make it movies about you. And because this person is often dealing with number three, jealousy. Envy and jealousy, beloved, you know when you are an envious person. And if you do not deal with it, if you don't go to God and ask him to creating you a clean heart and renew the right spirit within you, beloved, you have the potential to kill other people, to harm them, not just physically, but psychologically, spiritually, financially, emotionally, because you are, as this word jealousy, the last five letters is lousy that person is lousy and friends you can't play with these types of people when you discern a person is jealous of you for whatever is the reason it's not because you are so great it's because they don't know how great God is in their lives they are dangerous people when a person number four is always blame shifting that person has the potential to become a killer. And oftentimes you will find these men will blame. It's not just the men. Women kill too. But men will blame, or let me say, I can't gender. I don't want to pigeonhole it with gender. The person that kills will say that it's their fault. It's their fault why they had to kill them. Because they did this to me. They took this from me. They caused my life to fall apart. Blah, 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 blah. Friends, that is a dangerous person. You don't play with a person like that. You will know when you meet a person. Listen to them closely. Listen to how they regard their family and their foes. Listen to how they discuss people who has, have been in their past. Listen to how they talk about their ex. If you are with someone who... And this doesn't have to be a potential mate. This could be someone who's just a friend. Listen to how they talk about their other friends. Listen to how they regard people, period. Think and listen to how they regard these, those intimate relationships. Listen to how they regard their parents. Listen to how they regard their, their children. Listen closely. Last but not least. One of the most dangerous characteristics of a person who can become a murderer is a person who used silence to damage, to harm, to bring you into subjection to them. People who play the silent treatment are dangerous. It is anti-Christ. It is against God. It is against the scriptures. The scriptures teach us to be communicators. If you do not communicate what you're feeling, and you keep harp, 
harping on it and you vilify the person who did not do what you wanted them to do. You vilify them. You make them out to be evil and wicked because they didn't agree with you. My friend, you are dangerous and you need to know what's going on in your own heart. When you silence people off for no good reason. Oh, beloved, you're dangerous. And that person is dangerous. If the man, if the person you're dealing with, your spouse, is constantly putting you on punishment psychologically, that's a dangerous person. The scriptures teach us, when you are offended, go to your neighbor. The scriptures teach us, forgive. Forgive. Forgiveness is freedom, my friend. And it's not something that we in Christ take lightly because we want God the Father to forgive us. So, beloved, these are some characteristics that you must watch carefully over every relationship, how they respond when you have a fallout. How do they regard others Beloved, listen to them closely because Jesus made it plain. Out of the abundance of the heart, a man or a woman will speak. And what they're thinking and pondering will come out in behavior, whether it's violence Slapping you around, friend, don't ever take lightly anyone putting their hands on you. That's a deal breaker. If you touch me once, I may forgive. Touch me twice, you got to get up out of here. Friends, don't take your life lightly. Your life is valuable. And forget all this, I love him. No! I love her. No! That ain't love. Someone psychologically beating you up, constantly playing all these mind games. That's a dangerous person. And I can assure you, before that man walked in that church and put that gun, pointed it towards his wife. This was his wife that this so-called elder pointed a gun at to kill this woman. Let me tell you something, friends. Those signs were there. Do not let desperation drive you to an altar to have a mate. Don't do it, my friend. You are better off sit still and ask God to get that desperate spirit off of you because you can end up potentially dead before your time because wisdom cries in the street. Wisdom cries out. The scriptures tell us in Proverbs it cries in the street. You know why wisdom cry in the street? Because streets are everywhere and God will speak to us and help us to understand and discern exactly who we are dealing with. My friend, enough has been said. Be wise. Be careful. Don't be desperate. If someone is beating you up and, and harming you, God is not going to be upset for anyone separating from someone who has the potential to kill you, my friend. That person needs some, they need some time out time. But beloved, we don't want you to even get that far. This woman was estranged from him. You got, to, you got to call this stuff out. The moment you see a person go off into this behavior, get away from them. Oh, friends, listen. When it comes to certain things, I'm ruthless. I'm 52 years old in my journey, and I have learned many hard lessons. The things God has taught me, I wore, and I set boundaries, and once I see them cross, I don't deal. Because I understand, beloved, this journey is tedious. And if you are not serious about Christ protecting your uh, relationship to the Father, because people can be treacherous, and there ain't no doubt about it. There is no doubt about it, my friend. Set boundaries. And once you see that person jump, that thing, don't make no excuses for that behavior. Because who... Hey, who or she is, is who and what you see. Don't make no excuses, my friend. 
God bless us all today. I love you, my friend. Till next time, send this video to friends and family to warn them. We got to, we got to do some cleanup, friends. We must do cleanup to walk in peace, joy, hope, faith, without being afraid that someone's going to kill you. Oh, because this is going down every day. Domestic violence is at an all-time high, my friend. God bless you. Till next time, enough said.